So I wanted to put something together for you that talks about some of the reasons why you would go for an MBA as well as talking about the different types of MBAs. Taught in an EMBA program for several years, I absolutely loved it. I adored it in so many ways as the teacher. Of course, if I were to, you know, kind of, if someone were to ask me in totality, what is the best caliber and quality of student you've ever had? Definitely EMBA, definitely, no doubt about it. However, a couple of things that are of concern here. Number one, executive MBA programs are quite expensive and the value that you're getting is not there per se. It's not going to be as valuable as you think it's going to be. So yes, it's an all-inclusive program. There's a lot of executive MBA programs which are Saturday only. Some of them might be Sunday only. Some of them might be a blend of Friday night and Saturday, whatever it might be. It's a cohort program, so you definitely get the networking. Um, you know, a lot of executive MBA programs, not all, but a lot of them are done off campus, you know, in, for example, in a hotel where, you know, not only do you have more, you know, kind of um, attractive accommodations, but you also get fed twice a day, all that stuff. There's um, one, you know, trip that you go on, an overseas trip, you know, whether it's China or whether it's Brazil or whether it's Europe, whatever. So um, all of that's kind of, you know, going to be part of it. But um, sometimes I have to say, and I say this with respect, even though we're living in a COVID world right now and many colleges have sort of loosened their entrance requirements, um, one of the attractive qualities to an executive MBA program, and there have been students who have admitted this to me, and they've told me that the only reason why they're in an EMBA program as opposed to an MBA is because they were honest with me and, you know, they frankly told me that they were intimidated by entrance exams and, you know, the GRE, GMAT, et cetera. So, you know, that's something that I appreciate the honesty, but you don't want to pay an extra $20,000 just to not take an entrance exam. In case you were wondering, in case you've heard, are a lot of the courses in an MBA program the exact same as an executive MBA program, meaning apples to apples? You know, innovation in the MBA program in a school and a course called innovation in the executive MBA course in that same school, is it going to be essentially the same? There's a really good chance that it's going to be exactly the same. And there's going to be a really good chance that it could also be the same exact instructors. I'm living proof of that, okay? Not everyone would want to admit that to you, but I'm here to help you. You definitely have a dedicated cohort. Um, most people, you know, usually EMBA programs are somewhere around 24 months. I'm sure they're reduced nowadays to maybe 16 months. Um, generally speaking, you kind of stick with the same people. Generally speaking, there are going to people. There are going to be people that are going to leave for a variety of reasons. But generally speaking, you're going to stick with the same amount of people and the same people um, for the entire experience. Which you know is sort of family. That that networking is definitely going to be there. Um, if you do want, you know, of course, that overseas trip and that is valuable to you, then you know, definitely go for it. There are some additional benefits that I would call, you know, maybe enhanced networking. But um, the other sort of fringe benefits, um, you know, okay, so, you know, you get an iPad. Well, you know, you're not getting a free iPad. You're paying for that and everything's sort of all inclusive. So, you know, just remember, um, you're not really getting as much as you might think. If it works for you, great. You definitely get a higher caliber of students for sure. But at the same time, let's kind of get into some of the cons. I've heard this from some of my um, former executive MBA students often, and they say it for the right reasons and they say it with love. So because, unfortunately, there's one thing about an EMBA that I haven't mentioned yet, and I hate to mention this, but I will. So an executive MBA used to mean something kind of specific. You had to have X amount of years before you could even be considered for an EMBA program. For the most part, unless, again, it's an Ivy League school, but aside from that, for the most part, all schools across the board have essentially done away with those requirements. They will, you know, as long as you kind of, you know, meet their minimums, uh, they're happy to take your money. That's unfortunately the truth. They are more than happy. The, the, the director of the EMBA program is you know really trying to be your buddy, trying to be your pal, trying to be your friend. They give you their uh, personal cell phone number. You can call them anytime. You can text them anytime. 
Guess what? It's because they're a salesperson. That's all it is, folks. So, you know, the EMBA has really kind of relaxed. When I say relaxed, I'm not even being, you know, modest here. I'm talking about big time relax its admissions requirements over the years. So um, there is a chance that you could be a 40 year old EMBA student incoming, really excited to do an EMBA in addition to, you know, hopefully, you know, the career that you've been working on for the past 15, 17 years. Yet at the same time, don't be surprised if, and I say this with love because I've also had the other side, don't be surprised if there are 24 year olds or even maybe 23 year olds with really very little experience. In that sense, the younger students are definitely getting a lot more from the networking standpoint than you would be if you're someone who does have sort of, you know, a lot more substantial experience and now you're going back to school. In this sense, you're probably going to get the short end of the stick in this sense. Or quick issues to concern yourself with an executive MBA program. So if you're looking for this kind of superior caliber of um, academic rigor, um, you might be disappointed. It's not as though you're not going to get a decent education, incredibly high caliber. You're just not going to see it because, you know, just like an MBA, you can have students who are brand new to EMBA, but they're brand new to business. They studied psychology, for example, as an undergrad. Maybe they worked for five years and now they're an executive MBA student in a business program. So don't be that shocked. The last thing I'm going to say is there are a good amount of EMBA programs which are somewhat disconnected from the school as a whole, especially when you're doing off campus and you're doing a Saturday only program and you barely, you know, never even go to the actual campus itself. That part is not so much the, the issue, the physical aspect of it. Although the physical aspect does, you know, play a role in it, but really your connection to the school is really the director of the EMBA program, which I'm sorry to say is really nothing more than a salesperson. And the unfortunate part is that if you were an MBA program, you don't have that person, right? So you have actually a closer or potentially closer relationship with the you know, people as simple as the chair of the academic departments. And you might be thinking, really, if I'm an EMBA student, I'm not going to really have access to that. You're actually not, because EMBA programs are truly looked upon as, you know, something separate. I'm speaking with experience, folks. You know, I've had enough EMBA students who've told me all the wonderful things as well as all of the complaints that they've had. And, you know, me teaching them and being inside those courses as well as inside MBA courses, you know, so I'm, I'm really speaking from experience. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, definitely reach out to me if you have any, you know, questions or comments. If there's anything specifically I can definitely help you with, let me know. Um, I'm pretty knowledgeable in this area. I've got a pretty good amount of experience in this area, so I can probably, you know, really kind of help guide you a little bit more. And, you know, once again, as always, I really truly wish you the best of luck. So send me your comments and questions, and each week you'll get a chance to win a copy of one of my books, your choice, either my book on presentation skills or business writing skills.